concept and physical facility. And right understanding essentially means to understand harmony at all levels of living, starting from human being to the entire existence. Now extending that, we are able to see that when I am able to contemplate on the right feeling in relationship, I am able to ensure justice in the relationship, isn't it? And that justice extends from family to world family. So I become a pillar of undivided society. Similarly, when I am able to understand the need for physical facility rightly and fulfill it rightly, my competence to ensure mutual prosperity becomes a pillar for my role in universal human order. So each one of us has this potential. It's only that unknowingly we are only working for physical facility. That's why we are not able to utilize this kind of potential. So this kind of transformation is required from education where education is presently only focused on physical facilities, we need to move to this completeness. Then we started discussing harmony. So we said that essentially this whole thing is a process of self-exploration, taking everything as a proposal, and this is something that we have been doing for the past two days. You know? See, from our side, we are not saying that this is it, nothing like that. It is only a proposal. We are co-explorers in the process. We can verify the proposal at the level of our natural acceptance and we can live accordingly. So many examples and cases that were cited you know, shows how we are trying to live accordingly, how we are trying to relate to what is happening in and around us. So in this gradual process of verifying within and living accordingly, it gets validated. And then I come to see that yes, this is it. I am able to see the self as it is, the body as it is, the relationship as it is. This becomes a part of my right understanding. And this is the core of education. In education, if we enable this process, learning skills is not a big deal. You can see how students are able to learn through MOOC courses, you know, through many online platforms, through internship. So many ways are there. Essentially, we have to ensure this in education. If this comes to the core, comes to the you know, foundation of education, then rest of the things will be taken care of. Managing attendance, managing discipline, and, uh, managing a kind of ecosystem for education in the institution is not a big deal. It can be taken care of. Once this becomes the core of education. So you could see that the basic aspiration is continuity of happiness and prosperity and happiness is to be in a state of harmony. You could also see through your example that we you know, shared that it may be the case that presently we are not able to see that happiness is to be in harmony. And that's how it appears that Happiness is the same, is the, you know, is different for different people, it's not the same for all. Once we have this kind of notion, this conditioning that for different people happiness may be different, then we have a doubt whether we can ever be living happily together. Because if you are having your own notion of happiness, I am having my own notion of happiness, how can we be happy living together? So this has to be understood, that happiness is to be in a state of harmony. Similarly, prosperity. So I can make out the need for required physical facility rightly and I can also make it available for me and I can have this feeling of prosperity that yes, I have enough. I have more than what is required, isn't it? So that deprivation will not be there. And then we'll work with the feeling of prosperity. We talked about the harmony in the human being and then we could see that human being, if we go to understand, we have to understand two realities, self and body. So body is something that we are able to see with the eyes, isn't it? But there is another reality whom I term as I. I want to be happy. I want this, I want that. I am feeling comfortable, I am not feeling comfortable, isn't it? So this has to be understood. We can also see that the body only has the activity of recognizing and fulfilling. I have the activity of assuming and knowing, isn't it? So I am the consciousness, the body is material. We might have heard certain things which relate to this. But again, those things also I can keep as a proposal and verify. Otherwise, that also becomes a set of notion in me. Isn't it? We have heard the words, but we have not gone into the meaning of that. Then we discussed about the harmony in the self, and you could see that there is imagination in me. And the imagination could have three sources. One could be I have assumed something without knowing it. And we could see many you know, examples yesterday when I mistrust the other. I assume something for the intention of the other. I assume something for the competence of the other without verifying it. So I become preconditioned. Similarly, the body is there. I get sensation from the body. But if I try to associate happiness to that sensation, it cannot be continuous. It cannot be definite also. So 
So here I become enslaved because there is neither definiteness nor continuity and there is dependence on outside. This body is also outside me, isn't it? And here also I am dependent on something outside because something from outside is getting poured inside without verification. So that is also an enslavement. But when I am able to refer to this natural acceptance in me, the innate source in me, I always get the genuine answer and I am able to know the things as they are. So this has to be enabled. But presently it could be the case that we are largely preconditioned or dictated by sensation. Only partly we are you know, living by our natural acceptance, isn't it? But we are, essentially we need to work for this. We need to be completely guided by right understanding, isn't it? Then you talked about the harmony of self with the body. So I could not get any sharing regarding the feeling of self-regulation or health today. So maybe if you could make out certain things by the discussion yesterday, could you see some, some shift in your feeling of self-regulation toward the body with the discussion that we had yesterday? Can we see that we are now more responsible toward the body in terms of nurturing the body, protecting the body, isn't it? So you can see that there are only three particular purposes for physical facilities. So I require food for nurturing, I require clothes and shelter for protection, I require instruments for right utilization of the body. There is no fourth purpose. If there is anything which I am consuming or I am having which is not serving any of the purposes, maybe I do not need it. And we see that we might be spending so much on certain things we do, we do not need at all, isn't it? I will not list them, but still you can see, we you know, purchase and sell paintings for crores of rupees. <laughs> Whether it is for nurturing the body, protecting the body, or rightly utilizing the body, is it depicting harmony? So we might be having so many desires, hobbies and things like that which is not serving any of the purposes in terms of physical facility, isn't it? So you can see that these are limited in quantity which I require. Now with this clarity also, initially we said that the need for physical facility is limited. Now we can very particularly see why it is limited. Because for nurturing, food is limited. In fact, you see that it's not essentially food that I require, I require nurturing of the body. The nurturing of the body could be with food, could be also without food. So if you eat continuously, it will spoil the body, worsen the body. So that's how we eat only a few times in the day. We also sometimes go without food in a year to nurture the body, isn't it? Now generally when we compare with others, we might be comparing in terms of money. But essentially money is for food and food is for nurturing and we have to see whether body is being nurtured or not. So a person living in a hut might be nurturing the body better than a person who is eating in a five star hotel, isn't it? quite possible. Similarly, essentially want to protect the body. So this is only a means to protect the body. What we naturally accept is to protect the body. <coughs> Clothes and shelter are means for protecting the body. Similarly, I want to rightly utilize the body. So I might be having a lot of instruments, vehicles, gadgets, but whether I am utilizing the body rightly or not is to be seen. Whether by using them I am spoiling the body or, you know, rightly utilizing the body. And a natural outcome of the same is health. When I do this with a feeling of self-regulation, the health is naturally ensured. In fact, you'll see that with right understanding, we also become very much aware of the sensation from the body. Even before you Anna, have any kind of ailment in the body, you start getting signal from the body. If you are aware of the signal, you start taking measures proactively. What to eat, what not to eat. No. So if you are getting some kind of sensation from the nose, you can very much decide that eating ice cream is not welcome now. So you get the sensation from the body, you are able to sense it and you are able to decide the right program for the body. So as, a, as an outcome, the body acts according to me and the parts of the body are in harmony now. The second outcome of the feeling of self-regulation is the feeling of prosperity. I can now very much articulate what physical facilities I require, how much I require. So I require physical facility in limited quantity for nurturing the body, protecting the body and rightly utilizing the body. And that's how we can make an assessment of the available facilities whether they are enough or not. And then I can see if enough, I feel prosperous. If something is not enough, I work for it. That's all. You know, 
nowadays if you turn on, uh, if you look at youtube there would be several videos and there's one person who keeps on asking this question to begin with are you a billionaire if no why not <laughs> Have you seen that? Are you a karodpati? If not, why not? <laughs> so do you really want to be a karodpati or you want to be prosperous? If that is not clear, and students might get motivated. Essentially, do not want to be karodpati or billionaire. We want to be prosperous. And then you can see that if I have the feeling of prosperity, I think of right utilization, I think of nurturing the other. If I feel deprived, I feel of accumulating, I feel, of, feel like exploiting the other. And with this I can make the right program for my body. This is something also that we can take care of you know, for the students also. Can we have some program where the students can be guided for right intake, right routine, right labor. In fact, in IIIT Hyderabad, uh, it was thought that why not the mess messes were there in the hostels but it was thought that the food in the mess is not so good for health so why not have one mess where nutritious food can be given uh, less spices less you know hot and so many things so people thought that okay let us have one kind of mess maybe 10 or 20 students will at least come and they will eat so the mess was named as yoga mess and it was started and they started having very plain food three times in a day and gradually it was found that many students left their mess in the hostels and started eating there. They had to sit on the floor, they had to take this plain food, they had to wash their own utensils. And the students you know, started realizing this. In the hostels we are not giving this option. They have to eat the same food that is served which may not be very nutritious for the body. Can we have any such kind of mess or place to eat here in the campus where the students can get you know, this kind of food which is the right intake for the body? Can we have a place where the students can go and, and uh, do some uh, this, they can exercise some postures and regulate the breathing, we can have such place. We are not giving that opportunity also in the campus. If a, if a person wants to do some yoga, maybe in the morning, do we have some place where one can comfortably come and do? We are not giving those you know, avenues also for the student. So I have to think in these terms, if the student wants to work, do some labor, is there any opportunity? Presently, this summer, one course was offered in IIT Kanpur and one professor, Dr. Veena, offered this course. And this was discussed. Then the students started saying, ma'am, you are teaching so many things. If I want to do some physical work, do I have any opportunity? Can I do gardening for the institution? And can I wash the utensils in the mess myself? There is no opportunity. The set rules do not give you opportunity. So can we also open such kinds of opportunities for the students? They can take the right intake, you know, they can have the right upkeep of the body, a good lifestyle, isn't it? They can have the choice to do physical labor. Yeah. But these are three regular programs, intake, routine and labor and then we can complement it with exercise and regulated breathing and postures. If not, then we can go for medicine. And the final thing, if not working any of these, then could be going for some treatment or surgery and you know, things like that. Next, we went to discuss the harm in the family, something that we have discussed since morning also. So I can see that relationship is very much there. And it's not that relationship comes and goes. It is very much there. And it is between one self and the other self and there are feelings in relationship in one self or the other self the feelings can be recognized because they are definite and if i recognize them correctly fulfill it correctly and i evaluate correctly then it leads to mutual happiness when you go to recognize we can see that there are nine feelings in the relationship which are embedded the foundation is trust we could also see that trust essentially means to be able to see that the other intends to make me happy all the time But this is not to be assumed again. To be clear about 4A, we have to keep on asking 2A. If you are not clear about 2A, ask 1A. The more you ask these questions sincerely to yourself, you will get, you, know, you will be able to develop your own competence. You can see that if I am not comfortable within, I do not behave properly. It's not that I do not intend to behave you know, improperly. 
I behave improperly because I am not comfortable within. The same thing we hold true for the other also. One uh, student cited uh, one situation that he went to the mess in the morning and he had a very close friend. So when he was going to the mess, he met him on the door. So he wished him the morning. This person ignored. Okay. And then he felt very hurt that I wished him so well early in the morning. He should have reverted. He did not revert. <coughs> but still he went to the mess, had his breakfast. But the whole day this thing was churning inside him that <laughs> I consider him to be a very close friend and he ignored me like that. In the evening he met him on one tea shop in the campus. So he went and again said hello and said that in the morning I used to so well, he simply ignored me. Then this person said that, oh, was it so? I was really caught up in some thought because I, I came for breakfast in the morning and my purse was missing. I looked into the mess, I looked into the gym and I went to so many places but the purse is still not to be found. So I was really you know, caught up in that thought, maybe I ignored you because of that. Now this, whole, this person then started thinking that I thought so many things about the other. This person had his own problem. You know? He did not reward because he was not able to pay attention to me. Now in a similar manner, the other person is, has his own set of problems due to some preconditioning or sensation. I am only looking at the behavior of the other, expression of the other. I am not looking at what is going on inside him or her. But through dialogue, we can get to know what is going on. Then we can also get to know that yes, this person is conditioned in a proper, in a particular manner. It will take time for him to come out of this. He has picked some opposition for somebody because of some incident. This person is not able to come out of that feeling of opposition. And that's how he will take time. In the family also, maybe with the spouse, with the children, with the in-laws. We may be able to see that yes, they are conditioned in a particular manner. It will take time for them to come out of this. So I will not feel opposed. I will accept that yes, presently this is their state. It does take time for me, it will take time for the other also. Since I am into self-exploration, I am able to develop myself. Since they are not into self-exploration, they are not able to develop. At the same time, I can also see that my relation is not only with these limited three or four people that I have to keep on you know, working with them only. The whole society is my relative. So I'll give some time to the family you know, as much that could be fulfilling. The rest of the time I can invest for the society. Isn't it? It's a matter of chance that you know, we are there as a family, these four people. But it's not that the others are not my relative. So I start participating with every other human being and then it could also be the case that when I participate with the entire society, it complements my family also. The family is able to see that he is not only talking words, it is coming to an effect also. People are able to associate with him, people are able to you know, see the impact of this thing in the society. So that further adds to their confidence in you. So we are able to relate to every human being very naturally. Same, now next we talked about respect and we said that respect is right evaluation, isn't it? So when I go to rightly evaluate, I can see that the purpose, program and potential is the same in every human being. Purpose means the natural acceptance. Program means the program to be in harmony. And potential means the activity of desire, thought, expectation, which are very much there in me and the other also. I have imagination, you also have imagination. Here also if you see, all of us are sitting here. All of us have this faculty of imagination. But it may be the case that somebody is paying attention here, somebody is thinking about the department, somebody is thinking about the family. So one may not grasp the content the same way as other is grasping. So the potential is there, but the attention is somewhere else. It's only the case. Many times we say that you know, there is something called takeoff. So the content is here. You listen to the content, you try to relate to something and then take off. And then you find the whole hall laughing, you land back, you know? <laughs> Something has been said. <laughs> so keep on taking off, taking off, you know? So the competence may be varying, and the program that emerges out of it is to complement each other in terms of developing the competence. So the natural outcome of the feeling of respect is complementarity. You could see that there could be a variation in the level of competence of one and others. So here I am I, here self I, self J, self K to denote every other human being. 
So in a society, in an organization, there could be various levels of competence, isn't it? Develop the competence of myself as well as the others, you know? and I can accept the other also being competent, if the other has competence. The basic aspiration is continuity of happiness, you know? and that is to achieve excellence. Excellence is to be able to understand the harmony at all levels and live accordingly. So I can see that trust and respect is there for all. Everybody's intention is sound, you know? purpose is the same, program is the same, potential is the same. I have reverence for those who have achieved excellence, glory for those who have made effort for excellence, and gratitude for those who have made effort for my excellence. Isn't it? With this, we are able to understand the feeling of love. When I have these feelings in me, then I am able to relate to every other human being as a self. I am able to see my complementarity with every other human being. That is the feeling of love. So love is the feeling of being related to all. This is the completeness of feeling in relationship. It all starts with identifying that one is related to the other human being. It is affection. It gradually expands to the feeling of being related to all human beings and then to all, each and every unit in the nature. Isn't it? So gradually I am able to relate to plants, animals, soil, air, water. I am able to see my relationship with each and everything that exists. And this is expressed in the form of kindness, beneficence, compassion. We'll talk about this when we have the full workshop. So this is the foundation of undivided society. There is no division in me any further for any human being. Whatever be the kind of body, whatever be the kind of conditioning, whatever be the kind of background, okay, the culture, the civilization, ultimately I am able to see my relation with every other self. So within me, I am undivided now. I have no divisions in me. With this, when I am able to have these feelings contemplated in me, I am able to ensure justice in the relationship. And justice is recognition, fulfillment, and evaluation of human-human relationship, leading to mutual happiness. So I am able to see the feelings as they are. I am able to recognize them rightly. I am able to ensure the feeling within. So I fulfill within, I fulfill with the other and then the evaluation takes place. Now in every interaction, I evaluate myself, I evaluate the other. The other evaluates oneself, the other evaluates me. When all the evaluations are right, then only leads to mutual happiness. So ensuring mutual happiness is a responsibility, isn't it? If you try to see whether you are able to ensure justice in any relationship, every time, it's a big thing to you know, achieve. Because most of the time we are not able to ensure mutual happiness in our relationship. With our close family members, close friends, we might be hurting others, we might be you know, somehow making them unhappy. So the justice is not being ensured. So this competence to live with justice helps me accept the whole world as a family, which leads to me undivided society. Yeah. So we discussed this much yesterday.